Western Minnesota brought to us this morning by the International Brotherhood of Electrical Workers, local union, and the oil bank. All right, Eric, we are on the fairgrounds. Dr. Black and Lewis to join us for the first segment. We're going to have folks from the Department of Health. We'll be stopping by. We're going to talk about the tobacco house. We're going to talk about all kinds of healthy things. And Paul Heider is here also to provide health services. They've got some booths here at the fairgrounds. We're going to inform people about what they have. Exactly so, and uh, we're glad that they're here, and uh, you know they're here to spread a message. And uh, what a better place to be in contact with uh, people coming through? You know they can communicate with them and just explain, you know, what are we doing here in the county for our, our health reasons and environmental reasons. And so uh, that's all part of uh, why we're here. Attendance at the fair has been good. Attendance has been good. Uh, you know, the weather's been favorable. Uh, then a little on the warm side, but that doesn't seem to stop uh, the people in the fair going that were here last night. But we had some good crowds here the last couple of nights, and uh, it's the weekend, and the sun is shining. And uh, right now, uh, we're a little wet here at the fairgrounds. We had a little storm come through yesterday. Uh, I got a great maintenance crew, and they're on it. The, you're going to see them out here with rooms, uh, moving the water around to get it to dry, to get rid of the puddle. They'll be sweeping up. Uh, a few tents came down with the wind last night for that some of the vendors have here, but uh, all in all, I think we've fared pretty well to the storm. Uh, so, uh, earlier this morning, on Sunday, there was actually about uh, two inches here, about an inch and a half all the way to five inches. It's a very scattered as well as the area. It is scattered, and then, but you know, that's one thing that we can't control. You know, we can't say, well, we only want a small sprinkle for the dust settling, or we need more rain to water the flowers. I mean, we take what we get, and sometimes we don't want it, and we get it, and when we want it, we don't get it. So uh, it's a good thing we can't control it. Professional bull riding tonight. It is professional bull riding. The Dave Rice Bull Riding Company is here. Uh, they kind of foreseen this storm coming in there, so right away after the uh, lawnmower races were finished last night, uh, they were here and they're setting up, and they set up last night ahead of the storm so they didn't have to work through the mud, and uh, it was a good call on their part. So uh, the arena's all set up. Uh, we got to get a little bit of sand in the actual bull riding arena, but other than that, the pens and everything, the shoes are all set up, so we're all ready to go tonight, and it should be a fun show. I know there's going to be a lot of riders here. They have a big event tomorrow uh, at the Warner Coliseum at the State Fairgrounds that uh, the Rice uh, Bull Riding Company is putting on. And uh, so we're going to get a lot of those professional riders from that show that are going to come here. Of course, you know what they want to do is they want to build points. And this is an event that they can come and uh, build points to their total of points for that uh, magic number at the end of the season where they win their money. And also with the bull riding, you know, we'll have the women's barrel racing. Uh, that's always a fun event to watch. So, uh, you know, mom, dad, grab the kids tonight. We've got a great deal for you. There are three children being free with two paid adults. And uh, kids' day today, we'll be handing out some free tickets uh, to the kids at the uh, afternoon show. So, uh, yeah, come on down and enjoy the bull riding. You know, just... Uh, I know we had a storm last night, and uh, but don't let that scare anybody away. Like I said, we got the crews out here; they're getting rid of the water puddles. The sun is shining. I think the forecast is for a great day today. Uh, I want to remind everybody: it is Kids Day. Uh, kids, come on in. You know we got Ronald McDonald here to entertain you, and uh, come to that uh, entertainment. And every child that comes through will get a free ticket to get to tonight's grandstand performance, so they'll get a free ticket to get in. Performance and then during the performance tonight uh, at uh, intermission, we are going to be uh, having some kids' games. Uh, we got a lot of nice prizes. The radio stations graciously uh, donated some nice uh, tickets to attractions around the Twin Cities. We've got some for the Minnesota Zoo, we've got some for all the uh, entertainment spots at the Mall of America. We've got some bikes, we're going to be handing out some ride tickets. So, uh, you know, it should be a great time for the kids tonight during that intermission at the bull riding. Then you will be joining me for our fair box segment. I will. You know, it's just hard to believe today is Friday. I know. We're talking about what's happening this weekend. We'll be an old time music fan. You want to be here today because we've got a full lineup of old time music. Uh, we've got the new Craig Check singers that are going to perform at, at uh, 1 o'clock, and then that's going to be followed up by a uh, presentation. On the history of the concertina, Jerry Miller from uh, New Gray is going to be here. Uh, he's going to give a short presentation. 
And uh, we've got the new great uh, concertina club that's going to be here performing for us. And then tonight on the Midway uh, Summer Stage, uh, we have the Charlie Speaker Old Time Band. Come on out. Uh, F. Tom Brewery is uh, serving, uh, selling their brew that they uh, just started brewing here, right here in Fairville. Uh, they had a great turnout with it last night, and it's just going to be a great evening. So come on out and, and take advantage of this beautiful weather and sit and listen to some old time music. I will have a guest, and uh, another thing I want to uh, mention here is come on out to the beer gardens. Uh, Devin Worley's playing tonight at the beer gardens, so uh, you know, great entertainment there too. Thank you. Mr. Boogie, we've got Sue with us here. I'm done, right? Sue, Sue, what is your idea uh, to the Good morning. Uh, I'm Sue Boogie, and I'm here to advise you on the health and health issues and advise the Family Child Health Unit, and I'm here representing Health and Home State. Yeah, that's what you're talking about in your booth this year. Correct, correct. So give us some detail about what you have in your booth to do with me. Well, we would welcome everybody to come out and visit us at the fair. We are offering information about the link of housing and your health. Um, we know that there are links established between your health and housing safety. We'll be um, there to answer your questions about whether or not exposed or lack of exposed or safety at home. We know, we know that um, children, infants, and the elderly are the most at risk for injury in their home due to housing-related causes. So we're here to give you information. Yeah. I won't be able to get a lot of those uh, meters, uh, uh, the readers, the freedom testers, yeah. the freedom yeah. test kits. Absolutely. A lot of those away when they had the young lady there on the airways, I think back in January, February. Exactly. Read on test kits from kits are available at Rice County, and we'll have information about that at our booth as well. Those are free. You can come into our actual nursing office to get those test kits. It doesn't have to just be at the fair, but we'll be glad to talk to you about that as you stop by our booth. Did I not hear about the radon when I was a kid because we didn't have it or didn't know about it? Didn't have, we probably didn't have as much literature and support to know what its health effects are. We know it's the second leading um, cause of cancer, second only to smoking. So somebody we want to get information out to you and somebody we'd like to know about to test for at your home. And unfortunately, here in Minnesota, and particularly in this area of Minnesota, we are hotbed for rain. Yep, we live in a stone, stone basements. We have soil um, underneath our homes, so we definitely want our homes tested here in Rice County. There are a lot of places in the country that have to be. Correct, correct. Is that the number one reason why we have it? That I can't answer for you our number one reason, but um, definitely something that we want to have tested. Certainly a contributing factor. When I come to your booth, you've got things to give away, too, right? Absolutely. We have games, interactive games for kids at our um, booth. We welcome you to come and do that. We have games that are going to help teach your kids about the seven steps to keeping a healthy home. And there's our keeping it dry, keeping it clean, keep it safe, keep it well ventilated. Keep it pest free, contaminant free, and well maintained. So, we'd like to teach the kids about that and give you information about that as well when you stop by and see us. We have gifts for the kids and prizes for everyone. We've also been given some really nice donated prizes by our um, PMAP providers here in Rice County, Medica, Blue Care, and Blue Cross Blue Shield. So, we'd be glad to get your name in a drawing for some of those. Uh, Giveaways and they're good ones. Fire extinguishers, safety baskets. So come down, come on down and see us and register for some of those prizes as well. Tell me who this lovely lady is next to you. Right next to me is my partner uh, Tracy Ackenshaw, and she'll be talking to you a little bit about tobacco. Well, I'm just gonna put this image in your in your mind. Um, if this has ever happened to you at the fair, you're standing in line for food or something fun to do for a ride, um, and you're bothered, you all of a sudden you smell secondhand smoke. And I just experienced this with my nine year old son this week, and he turned right away and he said, Mom, what's that? And, and you know, it just, you know, the, the smell that bothers him. And so, this is a very common. Um, common occurrence at fairs that do not have any policies around smoking on their fairgrounds. And so we have an educate part of our um, 
Rice County Public Health Group is around education, around tobacco-free fairs, and recreation areas, as well as the opportunity for you to share your opinion on a, in a survey, a simple, quick, six-question survey around what your opinions are about this fair here. Um, what we would like to see happen is get the public opinion and gather that data, share it with the Rice County Fair Board, the Rice County Commissioners, and hopefully um, we can get the newspapers to, to talk about it too. Um, we are here at Rice County, one of the few fairs now in the area that does not have any tobacco policy regulating um, tobacco use on the fairgrounds. Well, well that's, um, that is good, and that's, that's a piece of it, but we also have ride areas. We have, you know, right now anywhere else you can smoke on the ground, and so if there's designated areas, especially around where there's children making that impact. All the way back in 2007, the Olmstead County Fair, um, outlawed smoking on their fairgrounds, and back in 2009, the Dakota County actually um, does not allow any form of tobacco use on their fairgrounds. But since then, the Minnesota State Fair, Masika, and Steele County have all, um, you know, in the surrounding area here, also have regulations and have um, designated smoking areas. And so we are wanting you to come down, complete this quick six question survey. You get a chance to be uh, to win a $50 Target gift card or some Subway gift cards. And it's a great opportunity for you to share your opinion. I did have um, yesterday uh, a smoker, she had quit, she's been smoke free, she said, for four years now. She smoked all of her life. And she said it really bothers her to be around that secondhand smoke as someone that has quit because she says right away she's real sensitive to that to that odor. And science has proven that there is no level of secondhand smoke that is acceptable, that does not do harm. And so or we're trying to create awareness around this. Another important piece is, is that uh, secondhand smoke is a very strong trigger to asthma, and we have some asthma information in our booth around that. So either asthma or anyone with the chronic respiratory breathing conditions, secondhand smoke can really um, take the fun out of the fair for those individuals. As you know, asthma, if, they, if it triggers an attack, they could end up in the emergency room um, not feeling well, and that really is not fun. So we just really want to create safe, fun places for everyone to come out to the fair and enjoy the fair and to be aware of um, that we really like to get some policies in place to help protect the entire community and make sure everybody knows they can come out and enjoy the, the fresh, clean air we have here. So come on out. Yes, come and take a survey. We're located in the Cannon River Commercial Building kind of right across from the, the Cardinal Cafe, um, next to the stage here. What's the name of the stage? The, this is the Midway stage. The Midway stage. And so if you come in the building there, you'll see the, the public health booth. We have lots of games for kids. I did bring your staff here. We have a game for children to play, too. It's a little five-inch mini frisbee. I thought you guys could you know, have some fun on your breaks and, and throw the frisbee around. So we have a quick question for kids. Look at their playing chess. They got to do some practicing, I think, though. Or... So, a Ryan ball there. <laughs> so, it's, like we said, we have some fun, active things for kids. We also have some larger frisbees and prizes, um, like Sue just mentioned, talking about the healthy homes and what you need to get rid of in your homes to keep them healthy. And so, some fun things that you know, adults and kids should come and check out our movie. <laughs> Yes, as, as, a, as your county health educator, that is my goal. I appreciate it very much. What's been happening in your part of the world, Paul? Well, there's uh, always a lot of happen things happening in the Environmental Services Department. Uh, as you know, the uh, Environmental Services Department is, you know, you have your planning and zoning kind of part. Um, we have so many different programs right now. You come down to the fair and you check out our booth. There's just a treasure trove of information out there. And also we have uh, we have Plinko for you to play to try to win some prizes that uh, we have. We can win some uh, keychains, little uh, 
Caribbean keychains. There's some pencils, some candy for the kids, and also there's a, a free uh, disposal of uh, appliances you can win, which is on the Plinko game. So when you come down there today, you'll still Brad Barons will be down here, so make sure you come down and play for Brad. Uh, we try to win some of those prizes, but there are a lot of different things going on with, uh, with the department of uh, environmental services, and of course, you know we do have the solid waste uh, division out of that, which I mostly am, in, which is the recycling center, landfill, and hazardous waste facility. We still have some great paint for the people out of those paint jobs out there that can come out to your facility and not spend a dime on the paint. Correct. We have a reuse room, so what happens is when people no longer want their, their paint, they bring it to us and we check it out and put the good stuff on the shelves. And uh, the public can come out at any time we're open and uh, pick it up and use it at no charge. And last year we sent back out the door about 20 tons of uh, or materials that we could put in the reuse. And you're just think where that would be if you didn't do that. Yeah, correct, correct. And uh, so we're still getting a lot of paint that's coming in that's bad, which is good because we're we got a program to deal with that. Also, we're looking at here in the next month or two signing some contracts. The state has this paint care program, or the paint care program is in the state now. And that is a program when you go buy brand new paint now, there's a fee that you pay, and that goes towards uh, uh, disposal of that paint later on. And so the county's looking at saving quite a bit of money by signing up with this program and partnering with Paint Care. It's a good program. It's a product stewardship program to where, you know, you, you prior to, it's all paid for, and so if, if the taxpayers doesn't have to pay for that, uh, someone else is paying. About a month ago, my monitor went out of my computer at home. Just stop. Where do I take that? Well, you can take that. There, there are some other options. Um, you know, depending on what brand it is, if you go on the county website and go under environmental, we have some links to some of the different electronics that would be sent back. But you can also just bring it down to the Rice County Recycling Center. There is a fifteen dollar fee for uh, monitors and TVs. Uh, for this, for the recycling of them, and yeah, by law, the monitors or TVs have to be recycled. That's what we encourage. We're going to do another free electronics. Right now, we have nothing planned for this year, and it's that's above my pay grade. So, <laughs> well, I understand. But yeah, I don't. I'm not sure what uh, the the plan is if they're going to be doing some. But the last few years, we've done those uh, free uh, uh, electronics and appliance collections. And uh, I think they're kind of looking at it. we get about three in a row, and we think we've got a lot of the bulky stuff out of there. So it's you know we're, we're kind of watching to see what the numbers are still high for the future. I'm with the Lions. We put a couple of those out here. I can tell you we got a lot of bulky stuff out of the street. <laughs> and unfortunately, I think there's still quite a bit in there. Oh, I'm sure there is. But uh, one of the things that my cohorts down at the planning and zoning wanted me to kind of push is that, or get the word out, is that there's a couple uh, grants and sub-grant programs that are out there. One is for uh, a well seaweed program, and if you come down to the Grace County Environmental Booth, they have a lot of information on that. And then there's also a water quality uh, sub-grant uh, sub to uh, basically protect the waterways, you know, setting up communities or uh, groups setting up rain gardens. There's some there's some uh, money and cost sharing things that you, that are out there that the county can uh, can deal with you. And the person to talk to at the Rice County Environmental Services would be uh, uh, what's her name Jenny. Talk to Jenny about uh, about some of those sub grants that she can help you out with uh, filling out the forms that you're using. Yeah. Okay. Make sure you contact Jenny. Jenny for environmental services. Yeah. If you guys want to hear there's some other information. Oh yeah, we have, like I said, we have a treasure trove of information, plus fun, fun and fun and candy at the at the county fair. But yes, we have a lot of information on a, a, a number of different issues, just not uh, solid waste or recycling, but also with all the environmental services, uh, the planning and zoning side of what the county offers. Do you enjoy coming out there? Oh 
way I enjoy the food, especially. <laughs> oh yes, I've I've been with the county 14 years, a little over 14 years, and you know, I've been at, at dealings with the, the county fairs, you know, the, the whole time I've been with the county. It's always a fun time. Uh, kind of get away from the landfill for myself and, uh, and and come out here and just uh, you know talk to people and try to spread the word and you know try to give them the information they need to know. Oh yes, I mean we started when I first started you know, recycling. We had those little uh, green tubs, if you remember. Oh, yeah. and we had to separate everything out, and now we have big blue uh, bins that we can throw everything together. Uh, just the, the number of changes that's happened over the years. You know, when we first started, we had no electronics recycling. Uh, it was, was a, we had always had appliances, but I mean, a lot of that was things have been added. You know, for us, light bulbs now are being collected. You know, what percentage of these people are going down to be recycled? Well, the percentage of people, it's probably really high. I mean, it's if you look at the numbers. I don't know if it's for the people wise, but if you look at the total recycling rate for the county, we have about a 65% recycling rate county wide. That's I think that is high. That's that's fairly high for the state. I mean, through the state, they want to have at least like about 35%. And you know, it can always be better. We we see what gets thrown away. There's still a lot of uh, recyclable material that doesn't get thrown away in the, in the landfill. But that is actually a, a very a good number. It's up on the higher. It's not the highest. Uh, counties in the in the state, you have some that have like about a ninety percent recycling rate. That's what it would be. Yeah, it'd be nice to get there, and we're we're slowly working there. But unfortunately, we live in a throwaway society, and until we can kind of change those habits, we're still kind of stuck about that about that sixty sixty five percent. Oh yeah, it's when we switched in uh, 2008 to the uh, the single sort, we had like about a 60 plus percent increase in recycling from, from the households because it became very it became really easy to recycle. Yeah, you didn't have to pay. Yeah, it's and you, you run into people saying, you know, I never recycled before, and now it's really easy. Boy, I have very little garbage. <laughs> As time goes on, just in the recycling, and you look at the materials that we can take now. I mean, it used to be before, you just we had a limited number. Now we have, especially when it comes to plastic, we can take uh, one through seven. There's a few things of plastic we can't take, and those would be like your styrofoam or styrofoam like materials. Um, and of course, your big bulky um, uh, plastics. No plastic sheeting, but uh, those plastic bags, you know, you get at the store to recycle. And also now we can also take your carcass, you know, they call it aseptic packets, and those can be actually recycled too. And so those, over the years, more and more items have became, been able to be recycled. In fact, I read just, just the other day that a glass bottle will last a million years. Oh yeah. It, you know, it's, a lot of these things will, it takes a long time for them to break down. Hey, thanks Paul. Yep. Yeah. Make sure you visit the environmental service booth and the Department of Health booth and the County Attorney booth and everybody's booth. And we've got to send it back here real quick. Did you have something else, Mike? Well, I'm, this is Tracy with Public right. Health and we just wanted to remind people too that we have the lactation station available here for our moms that want to nurse or have a, a need to change, have a quiet air conditioned place to change their their little ones. So come into the Cannon River commercial building and there will be signs up and we want to know that you know public health is supporting and want you to use that space we have created for you.